Well, a great big howdy to everybody. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. I have a belated uh, congratulations and appreciation extension to the veterans from yesterday. Uh, once more, uh, I speak personally as well as collectively for our community that um, we appreciate our veterans and their sacrifice and our quality of life is so much better because of the sacrifice of our veterans. On the subject of agribusiness, uh, I have a recap of the NC State Fair that closed recently. The North Carolina State Fair wraps up a successful 2024 run with close to one million visitors. The 2024 North Carolina State Fair finished its run with a strong weekend pushing the overall attendance to just shy of one million visitors. The final attendance was 998,926, the sixth largest in the fair's 156-year history. This was a great fair that was blessed with 11 beautiful days of weather, and the attendance reflected that. But seeing people enjoying themselves, laughing with family and friends, and making memories together is the true measure of success, said Agriculture Commissioner Steve Troxler. I want to thank the State Highway Patrol and Raleigh Police Department for handling the traffic throughout the fair, uh, our law enforcement partners who are essential to ensuring a, sta a safe fair, and especially the public for their continued support. Other highlights of the 11 days included setting a new attendance record for a Tuesday when 85,738 came through the gates for Senior Day, seeing record attendance of nearly 2,400 people for the invitation-only Century Family Farm Reunion, a celebration of farms that have been in continuous family ownership for 100 years or more, a total of 254,000 meals, or 17 truckloads of food products were donated during Smithfield Foods Hunger Relief Day. The food collected this year will go to the Manna Food Bank in Asheville. Uh, that is spelled M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, Manna. Manna's warehouse was washed away during flooding from Hurricane Helene. The Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina, the typical recipient of food items during the one-day food drive, chose to send the food collected to Manna. A strong junior livestock sale of champions with bidders paying $213,000 for the top beef cattle, turkeys, hogs, sheep and goats, plus the top got to be NC winners. Celebrating 20 year anniversaries of the Tobacco Barn and Heritage Circle and the Field of Dreams exhibit near Dorton Arena. Attendance for the Got to Be NC Pavilion was up with the number of participants, uh, North Carolina food companies, and fair visitors. Marking the first year of the North Carolina Steel House, featuring North Carolina distilleries serving craft cocktails. Participation by many Western and North Carolina vendors and crafters, which provided them with sales opportunities during a much needed time. Strong number of competitive entries with 24,514 entries in the general competitions and another 14,067 entries in livestock competitions. The 2025 North Carolina State Fair will be held October 16th through the 26th. So that was uh, just uh, a summary of the highlights of the fair and indeed it was a great fair uh, one of the marketing slogans of uh, the NC State Fair from years gone by was love a fair. And indeed, we do love a fair. Moving along, changing the subject, uh, I have something here about peaches. And uh, the peach industry is still important in North Carolina. Summertime in North Carolina isn't complete without buying a basket of peaches at a fruit stand on your way to the beach or when driving past local orchards, whether in a cobbler, ice cream, or freshly picked, a juicy peach on a hot day is hard to beat. 
These fresh, fuzzy fruits delight people of all ages. There's something special about a North Carolina peach, says Brad Thompson, a peach farmer, president of the North Carolina Peach Growers Society and agronomist with the State Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. It has a better flavor and tastes better than a peach grown elsewhere. North Carolina peaches can be grown throughout the state, from the mountains to the coast, but are mainly produced in the Sand Hills region of Montgomery, Moore, Richmond, and Anson counties. Located in a small Sand Hills community of Ellaby, Bynum Farm is where third generation farmer and Richmond County Farm Bureau member Danny Bynum grows peaches along with other fruits and vegetables. Peaches love the sand hills and do well in the sandy soil, Bynum says. It's been proven that peaches have a higher sugar content when grown in the sand hills. A peach won't be as good in clay or black dirt. In 1922, Charlie Howard and Honest Carpenter Bynum relocated on a horse and wagon from the rocky clay hills of Lincoln County to Windblow. Once established, they planted tobacco, cotton, peanuts, corn, watermelon, cantaloupe, and eventually peaches. The Bynum family has been growing crops on that same land ever since. Their grandson, Danny Bynum, took over the farm in 1989 from his dad and uncle and continued growing peaches. When you're at the stand in the summertime and someone says, it's so good, it makes me happy because I know I had something to do with it, Bynum says. Here's another reference to another farm, the Kalawa Farm, in Eagle Springs, just down the road from Canada in Moore County. Kalawa Farm is a fourth generation peach farm run by the Williams family. Moore County Farm Bureau member Jan Williams grew up on a peach farm and dove into farming after teaching for 10 years. I didn't realize how much peach farming was in my blood, Williams said. Picking peaches in the summer, raising peaches and children became a way of life for me. The farm is truly a family affair with even the farm name paying tribute to Williams' first three children, K.A. Ka for Katie, L.A. La for Laura, and Y for Will. Once her kids got old and were able to work with her on the farm, they expanded the family business to include Ben's ice cream, named after their fourth child, a fall corn maze and Christmas at Kalawa. Williams also honors her uh, to ch uh, her ten grandchildren on the farm, as the f flavors offered at the ice cream shop are named after them, including Paisley's popular peach, uh, Nash's nana pudding, Maggie's moose tracks, and more. Now there are pitfalls, needless to say, uh, concerning growing peaches. They include raising peaches is like going to Las Vegas. You'll probably lose more than you'll win, Bynum says. Bynum is quick to point out that weather is the number one challenge when growing peaches. You can control the rest with sprays, but there's nothing you can do about the weather, he says. I don't worry about it, and I don't do anything to prepare for the weather. If the Lord wants me to have peaches, I'll have some. Canada claims to be the peach capital of North Carolina, where at one time there were more than 43,000 acres of peach trees planted in the sand hills. 43,000 acres, my goodness. Peaches have become increasingly harder to grow in North Carolina due to inconsistent spring weather uh, with a peach acreage declining significantly over the past 20 years. Out of the 114,000 acres of peaches grown in the United States in 2022, only around 1,200 acres of those acres were grown in North Carolina, according to the 2022 Census of Agriculture. The climate is a big part of why North Carolina is growing less peaches. It's harder and harder to get a consistent crop. 
not knowing if there will be a good peach crop is a major concern felt by all peach farmers. Every spring we worry the blooms will be early and then it will freeze. It has happened a lot in the last few years, and that indeed is very discouraging. The peaches to grow well for them in the spring and then break dormancy from the win uh, winter weather, they must be exposed to temperatures in the 40 degree range for a required number of hours during the dormant season, known as the trees chilling requirement. Most North Carolina peach varieties have a chilling requirement of approximately 750 hours. Fruit breeders are now developing high chill peach varieties which need closer to 1,000 chilling hours. Extending the number of chilling hours prevents flowers from blossoming too early and decreases the risk of frost damage, leading to a more successful peach crop. A symbol of longevity, peaches will always have a special place in North Carolina agriculture. Raising peaches isn't only a family business for North Carolina farmers, but is uh, truly a labor of love. I love the fruit, w William says, and I love watching it grow on the trees and then seeing the beautiful blooms in the spring. So uh, this is part of our crop diversity here in North Carolina. And even though the acres have declined, the acres that remain are indeed uh, ever so important. I have something here I'd like to share that uh, is not directly related to farming or agribusiness, but uh, it is ever so related to our community and to the good work uh, the Gateway Partnership is doing to bring in trade and industry into our area and provide alternative employment. Uh, here's a recent uh, announcement about a company coming to the area. A company invests $8.4 million in the Tarboro Industrial Park. And what this is, New Jersey Stainless Steel Distributor is uh, planning to relocate and eventually hire up to 30 employees. A New Jersey company is going to invest $8.4 million at a location at the Tarboro Commerce Center as part of a plan to relocate operations to eastern North Carolina, the Carolina's Gateway Partnership said in a news release recently. Prudential Stainless and Alloys is going to occupy and renovate a shell building at the industrial park, uh, the news release said. Tarboro Commerce Park is northwest of Edgecombe Community College main uh, camp campus. Generally, a shell building is a reference to a construction method that focuses on the exterior and core of a building, leaving the interior unfinished so that an occupant can customize the space to that occupant's needs. Prudential Stainless, which dates back to 1948, is a distributor of stainless steel, nickel alloy, and aluminum pipes and tubes. The company, which is near the Interstate 95 corridor and west of Staten Island, New York, sells to other distributors worldwide. Prudential Stainless President Joe Kritzner, in prepared mark remarks, is part of the uh, as part of the news release, which was issued that last week. Uh, said that the company chose Tarboro because of the town having a business-friendly environment and welcoming people. Uh, Krishna also said that the company chose Tarboro because the town is a central location for shipments of products via truck and aircraft in proximity to seaports. We are very excited to make the move and to become part of such an amicable uh, community for years to come, uh, Krishna said. According to the news release, Prudential Stainless location at Tarboro Commerce Center is going to employ 10 people within the next few months and bring the total about to 20 to 30 uh, for the long term. Tarboro Town Manager Troy Lewis, in prepared remarks, as part of the news release, said that the municipality is thrilled to welcome Prudential Stainless. 
This significant milestone not only boosts our local economy, but also demonstrates the town's commitment to attracting growth and providing valuable opportunities for residents, uh, Mr. Lewis said. Carolina Gateway Partnership and President CEO Bob Pike, in a prepared remark as part of the news release, said that he believes that with prudential stainless relocation and the company's proven track record of success as both an industry leader and employer, the opportunity is for a brighter future in economic growth in Tarboro uh, that is very evident. Prudential Stainless is poised to be a strong partner of the community and region, and we look forward to welcoming them into the Carolina Gateway region. According to the news release, Prudential Stainless is going to be completing construction of the Shell building and adding another building for a total of 100,000 square feet. The location also is going to include a one-acre fenced-in storage yard. Gateway's partnership, uh, which is, uh, well, the Carolina Gateway, which is a public-private partnership, was founded in 1997 and is based in downtown Rocky Mount. Carolina's Gateway is the business and industrial recruiter for Edgecombe County, the city of Rocky Mount, and the town of Tarboro. That is all the time I have today. I've enjoyed being with you. Thank you for your indulgence and for your uh, invitation into your homes. I look forward to being with you next week. Everybody have a good week and God bless you.